All right, in this clip, I'm going to talk you through what's going on with the country's trade balance with the rest of the world uh, in reference to its GDP. So first off, good starting place to think about what GDP actually is, and usually we'll calculate real GDP because real GDP is adjusted for inflation, um, but that's, uh, that's not really relevant in what we're trying to do here. So biggest part of GDP is consumption, that's consumer spending. So any, anything that hits a cash register that's a new item, so we won't count used items at the Goodwill. I is investment, so any spending by a firm, um, you know, building a new Starbucks, building a new Home Depot, new home sales are also going to count because uh, you can rent those later. Uh, government spending, so any government buys a new aircraft, uh, builds a new base, builds a bridge, builds any sort of project, airport, anything like that is going to be counted there. Um, and then finally, we want to know, uh, since the D stands for domestic, what's the relationship with the rest of the world? So we, we take the, the goods that are flowing out of the country, so those are, those are called exports, minus the imports. Okay. Um, and so goods that flow into somebody else's economy will be measured here. Uh, and then goods that flow back into an economy will be measured here. Okay. So under uh, normal economic circumstances, what will happen is... Uh, if real GDP is growing, uh, that generally means that consumption is growing, right? This is the number one driver, really, of uh, an economy, right? 60% or so uh, can be even higher. It's at least half, right? Anywhere. Um, if consumers are spending a lot, what generally happens here is that in, in businesses, we'll see, oh, I can make a profit. I'm going to invest. I'll start a new company, something like that. I should be doing this with a different color here. So we'll, we'll do this with... Uh, red so this is going to increase okay uh, if these two are increasing government's going to have more taxes um, so they in theory you know it depends on who's running the show I suppose um, government might uh, increase spending because they have more tax revenue they might also pay down debt so this actually could go down or it could go up depending on whoever's running the show okay now um, if there's increase in consumption uh, that's going to create jobs okay and jobs usually produce goods and services um, generally, uh, exports, they, they can go up or they can go down. Now, if consumption and investment are going up, what's happening in the employment markets? The employment and investment in the financial investment uh, markets, these are also going up. So there's this wealth effect, right? So uh, usually, uh, somebody's getting richer when consumer spending is going up and investment is going up. Okay, um, so this is going to cause more employment. More employment means more spending and things are rock and roll. Um, also means more investment opportunities, right? So the value of stocks and other uh, the real estate market, things like that are going to go up. This allows more consumer spending. Uh, so have this wealth effect. Okay, um, now not everything can be produced in a country, right? So, you know, like you can give an example. In the United States, it's incredibly hard to produce coffee. We could produce coffee, but it's, it would be very costly. It's very cheap to produce it in Colombia, say, in what's called the coffee belt, uh, or vice versa. It's very easy for us to grow oranges, uh, relatively difficult for them to grow oranges in Canada or Iceland, right? So when the economy is rocking and rolling, uh, you're going to usually see an increase in imports, right? These, some of these wealthy people like to buy foreign things. Uh, these folks like to, you know, workers like to eat different types of foods. Um, if I'm a firm, I may employ all kinds of different uh, uh, products from around the world, uh, whatever else is going on. So in a, in a modern economy like the United States, what we generally see during the good times, we see uh, this import number going up. Uh, we may not see this go up or down. This is just something to measure. Okay, so that's generally what happens. Now let's let's do the uh, the opposite here. If there's a recession, what that essentially means is that consumer spending is falling, right? For for various reasons. Okay, so we'll just write back the G GDP formula here: C plus I plus G plus exports minus imports. Okay. So uh, in this recession situation, this is going to decrease. And remember, this is 60%. So if this were to drop by, you know, say 5% in a year, that's really bad news, right? Then uh, firms will not see that they can make a profit. They're going to drop that. 
depending on the government. If it's a more le leftist government, this is going they're going to increase spending here, deficit spending, uh, or uh, they may say, you know what, we're going to have to cut back, get lean, right, and it may decrease. So this is kind of a, a wild card here. Um, now we want to think about inventory. So the inventory within a country, if it's not being purchased by consumers, um, it tends to actually go somewhere else. Maybe not every country is having a recession, right? Um, or firms just want to make a profit, domestic firms want to make a profit, so they might increase uh, these exports, okay? So get rid of it, okay? And notice it says, I said may, right? It depends on the trade situation, the situation of the trading partners, how far away is this idea of distance, right? Can, can kind of mess up uh, trade flows. Now, if, if consumer spending and investment spending are falling, what's happening in the employment market, right? So we're gonna see a decrease in employment and we're also gonna see a decrease in financial, if I could spell it, <laughs> investments. Okay, so the, the wealth effect of the country is is also decreasing okay so if that happens we're not going to import as many uh you know if in the united states case you know uh coffee or bmws or um you know fancy vacations in europe or whatever so this tends to decrease here so this is what happens in a recession let's take a look uh at some real numbers here this is contribution of components of real gdp growth so this is back from 2001 to 2012 uh, I didn't go into the future. It's not really that different. So this is uh, now they're using the inventory approach, which is fine. Uh, just slightly different approach here. So there's consumption, there's investment, there's government, uh, there's exports, and there's imports. Okay. So if it stays flat, well, let's let's, let's look at a uh, quarter one, two thousand and uh, one. So we've got consumption increasing, investment decreasing. So firms are seeing bad bad stuff going on there. This is percent change. Government is one percent increase. The exports are decreasing and the imports are increasing. Then we enter the recession of 2001 uh, and we actually saw less exports and more imports. That's kind of interesting. So it didn't hold up with what's going on. As we continue with the recession, uh, you can see the, uh, the consumption continues to fall here and then government spending even fell there. Uh, the import numbers are, now the import number is decreasing. So you can see as they, the recession kind of, kind of hits there. Uh, it's really decreasing now. Now it's a, usually a lagging in indicator. This investment part, so you can see the the in imports decreased for a while as you work the slack out in the employment market. Then we get over here, going better times in 2003. We've now got increase in imports, so on and so forth. Uh, looking over here, we pretty much see decrease in or that orange number is the investments. Um, then, or sorry, the, those the orange numbers the imports. Then we're in 2009, imports actually went up. That's that's kind of interesting, 5%, so that goes against it. Uh, but then you're working it way in here. So what I'd probably say is that this is a lagging indicator. It takes us a little while to see. Um, here, these gray bars are the recession. So here I'm back at Fred, and this is 2000. There's the Great Recession, and then there's us right now. So we're up to $17 trillion adjusted for inflation. Uh, you can see this dropped from 15 trillion or so uh, down to almost 14 trillion, so shaved off uh, 600 billion or so. Uh, get back to there at 2010, and then just keep going up there. There's a, a little burp there. Um, not quite a recession because it wasn't long enough. Then back here is 2001. Okay, now let's see what happened. This is net exports. So what this number is, this is this number right here. So in the United States. Um, so generally, I'd have to look up the numbers exactly, but uh, this number is around three trillion, and this one's around three point five. Uh, you can you can look it up. They they go slightly up or down, but that means that this number is going to be negative because the U.S. firms import uh, more than they export, but they do export a lot. I mean, that's a trillion dollars. That's a trillion dollars, right? So uh, that's still significant. Um, and even if this number isn't three. I um, mean, if it was 2.5 or whatever, $2 trillion is, is bigger than, you know, many economies all over the world. It's just a huge economy that we live in here. Um, so what we're thinking about here is, is the trade deficit is a negative number, which isn't necessarily bad because, of course, it creates employment uh, and creates wealth, right? If you're an investor in a firm, 
that does international business and imports stuff or whatever. Um, but during the recession, if this number goes down and this number goes up, then it's actually going to create a smaller negative number. So like, for example, if this went down to 3, 3 and this number went to 3.1, then that negative number is going to decrease, right? During the good times, if this is either staying constant, but this is going up, the negative number is going to get bigger. Okay, uh, and there are countries that are net exporters, but many of the many of the top economies worldwide are, are net importers. So back in 1997, it was the that number was negative 85 uh, billion. Okay, so these are in billions. You see right there. Um, and the deficit got bigger. Okay, uh, and then it actually got smaller a little bit. So it did hold true there uh, in 2001. Um, deficit got bigger as it gets more negative. It gets bigger, and then uh, and then it and then it got smaller. Okay, as uh, firms exported more and imported less, then it got bigger, and then it got smaller, and then it's getting bigger again. Uh, but again, that's not necessarily bad. You know, say you bought a you know a Japanese motorcycle, you probably bought it from an American firm here. You bought it uh, if you want to get it fixed. You want to put new tires on it. All of these things. Uh, if you take it on vacation or something, that's all going to add to that consumer spending uh, number in the GDP. So there you go.